Hi there, it's Bibi here. Welcome to another video. And today I have a very easy and quick project for you. And I will be applying some traditional car making techniques like sponging and masking to make these snowy scenes. I know this is not something new. There are many, many ideas on the internet about snowy scenes for car making, but I wanted to make my own and bring them to you here in my YouTube channel. Also, because this week we have a challenge on Global Design Project and we are making cards using the images of trees. You can also participate in the challenge. There is a link underneath this video or in the video description. You can click there and you will be redirected to the website and you will be able to see the information. So this is the card I made for the challenge. Is uh, I have embossed the trees with white embossing powder, also the stars here, and I make a checker card. I might show you how to make these kind of cards in another video. Today I'm going to focus in showing you how to stamp the backgrounds. To start, I'm going to use a piece of watercolor paper, and I'm going to use washi tape to create a white edge around the paper, also to keep it on place on my glass mat. So sorry I'm using the designer washi tape to do this, but I just found it perfect for the purpose as it doesn't peel off the cardstock or the watercolor paper when I remove it. And I'm going to use also this masking fluid, which is amazing. It's so easy to work with it. And I bought it from Hobby Craft at only two pounds the bottle. Now I need to splatter this masking fluid on that watercolor paper with a toothbrush. I have to say that I think this toothbrush is too small and it's better to use a larger toothbrush because I'm creating a mess uh, because the masking fluid is dripping through the head of the brush. But no worries, it's easy to fix if this happened to you. You can just remove with the tip of your finger any big splatter of masking fluid you don't want to, just like that and you will be ready to keep going. And I'm going to allow this masking fluid to dry. While it dries, I'm going to create a mask using a post-it node, and I'm going to tear the paper just like that. And taking advantage of the sticky side of the paper, I'm just going to place it like so on the watercolor paper, and that's going to stay there. I'm going to make this card first. And one of the features of this card is that I'm using two different stamps. One has a smaller images of trees and the other one has a big tree. This is going to allow me to show you how easy it is to add perspective to your stamped compositions so that we create that illusion of having a three-dimensional scene, but actually we are working on a flat surface. Now I'm going to use this beautiful image from Lovely Has a Tree Stamp Set by Stampin' Up! And I'm going to stamp it using Elegant Eggplant Ink from Stampin' Up! This is a bright purple and I absolutely love this color, it's just beautiful. And I'm going to apply ink only in the top of the trees or the top of the stamp, just to get the top of the trees over that mask. And I'm making good pressure waiting for the watercolor paper to absorb the ink. You know that stamping on watercolor paper is different than stamping on a smooth cardstock, and the images are not so sharp, but they are also very, very nice. So now I'm going to grab Tempting Turquoise and Sweet Sugar Plume inks, and I'm going to mix these inks just by using water, like so. So if you see, I get like a purple, a bluish purple ink, and I'm going to apply a little bit of that ink there. Every time I'm using a mask, the first ink generation I apply is the darker. Then I start using lighter ink colors and blend them like so to get some degradation of the color and also to get color coordination. I'm just applying the ink in circular motions or also like strokes from the bottom to the top of the card, like so. And I'm not worrying about getting a perfect application of the color or a perfect blend in there. I actually want to see the seams of every layer of color. I think that looks fun and also give a quite a bit of contrast. And now I'm going to stamp this big pine 
here so that it will look like uh, this pine is in the front of the scene and the smaller pines or the smaller trees are in the back. I'm going to stamp this image using basic black archival ink. And this is a kind of permanent ink so it doesn't blend with the water or it doesn't bleed. But it's important to allow it to dry for a while or using a heat tool to dry it. Then we can keep sponging or applying the ink with the sponge. If you see here, I'm kind of moving the sponge like a uh, strokes. So I get kind of an effect like if there is some grass there. Uh, but I also can apply more ink on top and completely change that appearance. So something important for you to know is that it doesn't matter how you do this really the results are going to be quite nice anyway. Even if you make in circular motions or like strokes or if you move your hands to one side to another. I also want to add some color here, in this area here. And I decided that I'm going to add some of this ink I got here. I also want to add some light to the sky. And to do that, I'm applying some of the ink that I got left on the block. This is Sweet Sugar Plume. And I just apply a little bit of ink here. Something I think also that is important is to leave white spaces or leaving spaces without ink. You don't want to do that. You can also apply a little bit of water and you can just apply water with the ink that is already on the watercolor paper and you can get a very soft watch color there. Uh, if you need to use the mask again to create those kind of mountains or, or snow banks, you can do it as many times as you want. So this is the first image. Now all I have to do is to remove the masking fluid. So it occurs to me to use this tool, but it was peeling the watercolor paper when I'm using it. So I decide just to use my finger. It's the best tool, your hands. So just use your hands or your finger to remove all that masking fluid. That will be super easy to do, just like that. One thing I want to share with you in this video is about the kind of watercolor paper I use to make my cards. I normally use a stamping a watercolor paper, but I also use this paper here. It's 300 grams called Preset. This paper is made in England and it comes in a stacks of 12 sheets. It comes in different sizes. I got here an A4 stack. So all I do is cutting the paper in four, so I have four panels to make four cards, or I can get also two card bases. This paper is great quality, so if you want to try a different kind of watercolor paper, you can also try this one. I could not recommend it enough. Now I'm going to make this snowy scene. And I'm going to start by splattering some masking fluid on that watercolor paper. I'm using a larger brush, so if you notice, I'm getting larger splatters of this masking fluid on the paper. And when it's dry, it looks like there was an explosion of this masking fluid coming from a corner. So I got that kind of a pattern on the watercolor paper. And this means that when I remove this masking fluid, I'm going to have more snowflakes falling from the sky on my scene. So now I'm going to grab this ink, it's Night of Navi, and I'm going just to sponge the background like so. This time I'm going to use one single stamp to make this picture. And all I have to do is to place the stamp in different ways over the mask, to be able to give the effect that the trees are placed in different ways or in different parts of this scene. I want to make this to look like there was a big mountain at the top of the picture. So you can only see the top of a tree 
there behind. And to do that, I only stamp the top of the tree behind that snow bank. So that's another way to add perspective to these pictures using one single stamp. I'm going to add some mellow mambo ink and I'm going to put some music so you can focus in the coloring. Now all I have to do is to remove the masking fluid and do not forget to clean your hands before doing this. When you are sponging, it's possible that you get your hands dirty with the ink. So go and clean them before and then with the tip of your finger, just remove the masking fluid. And as I thought, I got plenty of snowflakes falling in my skin. So these are two scenes and now I'm going to use Whisper White cardstock. This is a smooth cardstock. This is not watercolor paper. So I have to be very careful when applying the ink and avoiding applying large amounts of water to avoid damaging the paper. And now I'm going to make this snowy scene. So this scene is going to be a little bit different because the stamped images look different on this kind of cardstock. And when I start sponging this, I say, oh, oh, I'm making something wrong here. I have to add the masking fluid first. So no worries, I'm applying the masking fluid. I'm going to leave it dry and I'm going to create a mask to make a moon. I have to fold the post-it note in two and then pass it through the punch like so. And then I'm going to place this mask here. And I'm going to start masking and sponging this background and then stamping. I'm going to play some music so you can relax and watch what I'm doing. I stamp the image quite far from the mask, but no worries, you can also fix this. All you have to do is to get another mask and apply new ink in that area there. And actually, I like the way this is looking now. I have too little ink in my sponge now, but I'm still passing it all over these white areas in my cardstock just to give it a little bit of color. And I'm going to use pool party ink to make this heaven to look a little bit more even and also to define the moon shape. And by applying this lighter ink and also using the mask, I can create more dimension on the picture. I'm going to grab a baby wipe to wipe any ink on top of the masking fluid. And then with my finger, I'm going to remove the masking fluid. But first I need to wash my hands and I need to make sure that my hands are clean. I could keep going the whole night showing different examples of what you can do, but at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same, but with different shape. So I hope you like these projects and you can make your own snowy scenes 
whether for this Christmas or for next year or for any moment really, but honestly, these are winter cards. So with pictures like this, you can make a Christmas card or you can also make a card to share some thoughts during this season. And to transform these pictures into a card, you can use die cuts. I'm using here a beautiful die from Stampin' Up. And you can also mix die cuts with a stamping. I love this bundle because it's a stamp set and also have coordinating dies. This basically allows you to use the word jolly and for example, a stamp the word Christmas and you just complete your sentiment like that. I'm going to use this Nouveau glue pen to paste the die cut to the card and it's just perfect because it has a fine tip. I easily apply the glue behind the die cut and something I like about this glue is that it's strong and it's easy to remove once it's dry. So it doesn't uh, dry sticky, it has other glues and it's easy to remove from die cuts without tearing the paper or leaving some discoloration on the paper. I paste my die cut a little bit towards the left, so I'm going to trim the edges of the cardstock. Ah, I work hard to keep that white frame around the image, but it's not possible to keep it because of that little mistake when pasting the die cut. But anyway, I can just add a layer of Whisper White cardstock behind and I get the white frame anyway. So I also thought that it was nice to make a little banner, adding some metallic thread and some gold sequins. I'm going to paste all these elements using glossy accents. I found this to be a very effective adhesive. And to paste the different layers of cardstock, I'm going to use Tombow Multi Glue. I wanted to make this card this way because I'm also showing here all the elements you can use to finish it. You can add a coat of shimmery ink with a wink of Stella. And you have to be very careful because when the wink of Stella ink gets in contact with the previous ink you have stamped, it will activate and it can bleed a little bit. So you have to be very careful when doing this. And another thing you can use is a metallic thread, a banner, sequins, die cuts, or stamping. I'm also going to show you how I finish the other two cards, just very, very quickly. And I'm going to play some music while I'm doing this. stamping on vellum, a gold sentiment, but then I changed my mind and I emboss it. I heat emboss it with gold embossing powder, but then I thought you cannot see it properly. And then I decide also to add some glitter spots like that with this gold glitter from Stampin' Up. Then I thought the sentiment was there in that corner and you could not see it. So I start playing with this card for a little bit. And at the end I found that I was messing up with the card. <laughs> I destroyed the card, to be honest, in another words. <laughs> so at the end, I just paste a banner on top. You know, when you don't know what to do, you just paste a banner on top 
and it will hide all the mess that you were creating. I wanted to show you this because sometimes the process of creating a card is time consuming. When I started making these cards today, I wasn't thinking, I just was enjoying sponging the backgrounds. I really didn't plan ahead where I was going to paste a banner or where I could stamp a sentiment. So sometimes thinking ahead what we are going to make is going to help us to save time. I also use today this beautiful sequence by Lucy's card. I thought she was American and I found her blog and I found she's British. I bought some of her sequins and they are just beautiful. I made this first card with her sequins and I just feel the difference in terms of quality and color and all the stuff we love. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and these ideas. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel visit my blog for more ideas or inspiration or to order stamping up products anytime thank you very much for watching and happy crafting bye